Right, hello everyone. Uh, welcome to hello. this top 16 double header KFPL stream. We are here on a Friday night. Yeah, not at Spoons. I would really want to be at Spoons. There's a queue to Actually, get are we in. Are we on a Friday night? No. I don't know if I'd want a queue to get into whatever Spoons. It sounds like a bad time to me. Sunday morning is always Spoons time. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, anyway, um, today we've got uh, two top 16 games. First we've got uh, Lorenzo and Rodian. Uh, and then we've got Jay Philippeg versus Mental. And I'm of course joined by Callum the good Dr. Young from Screech Bob Omb Commentary. Hello. Uh, I'm pretty hyped. It's a big night for United Archons Prime, two of their finest Archons, I guess. Yeah. Going off into the top 16. We've got a uh, Rodion from Brazil. Uh, Jay Philippeg from Portugal. Yeah, it's really exciting. Um, got um, a Hamburg Atlantean, hopefully ready to avenge Kiwi. Uh, it's true. He, he did take out Kiwi. Uh, and then we have uh, Mentol from the AFK, who's in Belgium. So yeah, we are all over the place today. I'm pretty pretty hyped. Uh, so you want to do some deck chat? Yeah, let's do it. Um, let me just get the decks up. Whoop. And I'll do a zoom zoom so they're all on the screen. All right, so we have up on the screen, first of all, Lorenzo's decks. Uh, so starting from the left, we have Specialist Zandstorm Greifswald. Um, this is a deck that uh, I've seen him play a lot of times. It is incredibly good. He's played it to great success in many different uh, Archon competitions. And the thing is, at first when I saw it, I was like, it's a bit odd because it is a competitive MM disc deck that does not have Infernus in it. <gasps> Uh, which was surprising until I realized that it basically just stops you from doing anything else at all. <laughs> anything you might want to do in a Keyforge deck, this deck will do a reasonable job of preventing you from doing. <laughs> so you've got like double Skippy Time Hog, if you want to use cards. Like if you want to have destroyed effects, you've got Purifier of Souls. You've got the Vault Keeper and the Discombobulator to stop you from stealing. You've got Opposition Research to stop you from reaping. And then sort of a double marking of this as well. So it's just incredibly controlling. Yeah, that's and actually really sort of brutal. To shut down your opponents massively whilst building up a pretty chunky Sanctum board with a sort of 114 uh, expected power, like a lot of big dinos, like double uh, dinos, sorry, big knights. Uh, I was getting confused because there's a dino knight, which is <laughs> yeah. 60. Um, double General Salvador, like shoulder armor. Uh, and then just a huge amount of enhancements as well. You're looking at 21 enhancements in the deck. So just a lot of big turns can come from that. And yeah, it's just all round very good. It's often a, a theme that we've seen in a number of the different Hamburg Atlantians deck choices. That they just tend to be quite strong on the all round, uh, like very adaptable decks. Uh, and that's what this is. Uh, what do you think? Yeah, it's... um. It looks very scary. You wouldn't want to be on the other end of that, but I guess, you know, uh, rocking this is the... too hard places. Yeah. yeah, I mean, this is the thing. That one has uh, not been banned a huge number of times, uh, partly because Odin the Aggressive has been banned five times out of six, Oof. which is, I think, understandable when you look at it. Yes, yes, absolutely. As if the number high wasn't enough of a scary factor. Yeah, casual 98 stats. <laughs> And yeah, you start with triple control of the week, <laughs> uh, which is pretty grim in of itself and will just win you a lot of games. And you're also then recycling those with the logos because you've got the Nova Archaeologist, you've got the help from yourself, it's essentially reshuffle in your discard pile. So you're just trying to hit as many massive control of the week turns as possible, where you sort of either fully lock your opponent out from doing anything or just give them like a series of suboptimal turns while you generate quite a bit of ember because you've got 16 pips and 25 expected ember oh that is speedy uh, it's pretty speedy and it's disgusting to have a deck that has a 20 disruption score Oof. Uh, yeah because you also have the scramble storm in the logos as well which is more lockout stuff 
uh, and then a Desania, which uh, could cause a few problems, but looking at the lineup we have on the other side, but more of that later. Uh, yeah, and so the Shadow, the Code of Shadows is like only 20 SAS, uh, which, you know, is obviously the weak point when it's literally half the SAS score of the disc. But we have so 40 long, SAS disc size. 40 SAS disc now. Which, it works pretty well. It got like, good, good stuff in it. got like Gear Darkness, obviously the best card straight away. Uh, but a lot of things with a lot of pips on stealing. Which is a classic Code of Shadows, really. And the third deck we have Lorenzo running out is Specialist Sandstorm Greifswald. Nope, it's not. It's this other one, which is in Chinese, and it's called Violent Valley Agent Randolph. Hmm. Uh, which is a pretty good name. And this is like another just all-round decent deck. Like, if you look at the numbers between the Ember Control generation, Creature Control, and the Speed, they're all, like, mid-tens, and so it does all these things pretty well. So you've got some board clear, and you've got sort of Quintrino Flux, Red Alert, and a couple of other things. You've got a lot of Ember Control. You've got a huge TMTP. As well as like Edai, Garcia, Brand, Frame, Ronnie, so plenty of that knocking around. The speed is pretty good because you've got uh, both Val Jericho and Zenzi Zenzi Zenzi. Oh, that's, that's pretty nice. Uh, which you can, if you can manage to get that set up where you alter which one is in the middle, i.e., Val Jericho during the turn and Zenz at the end, uh, can get pretty gross. As well as sort of other Worlds Collide logos. And stuff like Double Quant, Tabor. Just looking to set up a huge board full of creatures and do a, a ridiculous number of things on any given turn. Uh, this is sort of Worlds Collide Nightmare. Yeah, and, and you've got the Morpheus with plenty of play effects as well. So Ooh, double trigger yeah. on bodies, double trigger on Edai. Yep, Good double cards. frame, double grey... Really nice double, in every double jug goggle? Is that good or bad? I'm not sure. Um, I guess it depends how quickly you want to thin your deck. I I'd say it's good to put two cards under a dark goggle. But it might break uh, TCO. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I don't think I think you get one of the effects, but not both. That is my vague recalling of the rules. Uh, so that's Lorenzo. Uh, shall we have a look at the other side? Yes, sure. Uh, so here we have Rodian's decks, representing United Archons Prime, the first of our Lizabone contestants this evening. And uh, I'm given to believe he this is a this is a borrowed uh, triad, right? I think he borrowed this uh, fully off Jupiter. Yep. So that's one from Jupiter, two from Jupiter, and three. Uh, which A, speaks to excellent teamwork amongst the team, but also <laughs> uh, is a particularly impressive feat given he's made it to the top 16 fully piloting three decks that are not uh, his own, especially when they don't look especially simple. Mm. Um, so starting with the man who borrows the Vortex, um, you have a weird setup here because you've got 24 creature control and three Harbingers of Doom, as well as like Axiom Spartasaur, and a bunch of other stuff. But you're playing a Worlds Collide deck, which kind of wants to not be wipe, not be wiping the board as much as you're probably able to here. Because you want to be setting up some sort of ridiculous Starlight's board with a lot of reaping, making giant Kirby, perhaps, with a double light of the Archons. Or you want to be having some sort of continual Saurian nonsense with the Spartasaur. So you have, like, a delicate balance here between clearing the board of your opponent's things and uh, setting up your own ridiculous board. But I guess that is Worlds Collide for you. Uh, you also have an EE on the fringes, which I think will be able to clear out quite a lot of the diss from your deck. Yeah, uh, as... I imagine, you know, three Harbingers is a lot of Harbingers. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you probably don't. don't you perhaps don't need all of them. Mm -hmm. uh, but obviously EE could be potentially big because... Uh, Lorenzo is running two out of three disc decks. Yeah, so and what's so... the one that isn't? It's the Worlds Collide deck. Yes. Right. Okay. Uh, 
but still pretty handy. Two out of three. Uh, and yeah, the Saurian is um, a full of particular Saurian things. So you want to flag up Spartasaur for a second. Because uh, it is a rare and you don't necessarily see it that often. Mm -hmm. So it's fight game two and is 6 1, which, you know, is pretty good to begin with. But then the real interesting thing is that every time a friendly creature gets destroyed, you destroy each non dinosaur creature. So it can just completely take over a game because you can get a situation where you are just unable to clear any of the dinosaurs off the board because whenever you play several creatures, they just sort of run one of your own creatures into your opponents and it just blows up their entire board. And it just then becomes hard to remove because it's 6-1 and you can't stick any creatures on the board and so you can get huge amounts of value out of it. Uh, especially if you're doing things with like Philophosaurus as well, Rita Gallum. Uh, and so it's not necessarily the obvious Saurian we've seen in most KFBL Saurian lineups, i.e. some sort of trick semper shenanigans. Um, but it can still be uh, brutally oppressive in a number of ways. Uh, okay, let's have a look at Magisterial Warthog Benedict. Uh, so we have some Coda. And it's Coda, all right. Yep, this uh, local shadow is very typical. Yep. You've got a Dis, which has sort of double Ember Imp, Keita Dis, Hysteria, Control of the Week, Lash of Broken Dreams, just hitting all of the classics. Very disruptive. Um, then you have a Shadows, which is all steel, um, except a couple of other things, and those things are Poison Wave and Lights Out, so you're not exactly unhappy. Double TMTP, Bagan Triple Urchin, um, adding up for an Ember Control of 18. And yeah, a Logos, which isn't, the Logos isn't as draw focused as you might see in a lot of Kota Logos, mm. but you do just have a number of things that are very useful, right? So you've got the graft, you've got the effervescent principle, you have double remote access, uh, you have a strange gizmo, which is going to be a great board wipe. It's, uh, it's a board wipe that only works if you're ahead, though, um, because you maybe. actually need to forge a key to make it happen. You do, but I could see this deck just making it impossible to stop it from forging at least one key. Mm. Uh, just from sort of the level of steel and the level of uh, ember generation you'll get. A lot of pips and logos as well. Mm. So yeah, just some sort of classic. Uh, I, I feel like I'm being overly dismissive. This deck is obviously very good, uh, but I don't think at this point it requires any further explanation as to how it's going to work. Uh, however, Candleholder, the uh, third deck, I think does require a little bit of elaboration because it's hilarious. I love this I, deck. I love it, and it's going to be absolute nonsense to watch. So, this deck revolves around the double gambling deck. And surely you would think no one would play a double gambling deck in like a high-level competitive tournament. It's too risky. You just give your opponent ember too much and it can screw you. So, the thing is, when you guarantee either net zero or four, you just need to keep your opponent below two ember at the end of every turn. And eventually you'll beat them to forging free gambling den keys. And if there's a deck that's going to keep your opponent below two ember all the time, this is it. Because you have 26 ember control, which is ridiculous. And you've got three Infernuses, three Stirring Graves, two Antonies. So you just keep recycling those around and around <laughs> to essentially just keep your opponent beneath Gambling Den range. <laughs> Whilst you yourself are just trying to sneakily forge those keys by getting four, maybe sort of every couple of turns. To be honest, this, this is like, if I had to put together myself a disc um, MM deck, it would probably be this, right? Oh, it's just miserable. Like, besides the Triple Inferno's Triple Stunning Stirring Grave, you've got a Grim Reminder, uh, a Snudge to go with those three Infernuses. Uh, just in case you weren't playing enough Infernuses. <laughs> uh, an Anguish to nudge up the key cost as well, to perhaps put your opponent outside of Gambling Den range. 
Uh, and yeah, just like Dark Minion, Umbra Fiend, all good, as well as a proper board clearing gateway. So yeah, just sort of keep your uh, opponent under two Ember and then forge gambling keys all the time. Absolutely simple. This is going to be incredibly uh, hype. Um, what have the bands been like on this triad? Uh, very mixed, which is very interesting. So, uh, the man who borrows the Vortex has been banned three times, Benedict has been banned three times, and Candle Holder has been banned once. So it's likely that we'll see some gambling den action today. Uh, hopefully so. <laughs> yes. Uh, especially because I think if you're Lorenzo, you ban the man who borrows the Vortex. And that is my prediction. Okay. Um, what would uh, be the justification for that? Well... I think you can probably assume that the triple control the Wii deck is going to get banned. Yep. yep. And the other two decks you're looking for are both very board heavy. And this has um, all of the board disruption. Yeah, all, all of the board clear. Like triple Harbinger, uh, Axiom, other stuff, Hysteria. Um, uh, we do have a game one, and we will be seeing. Candle holder. Oh, gambling yes. den in action. Okay, brilliant. I will just uh, flick over to the game. Not give anything away. There we go. Uh, and the bands were, in fact, Vortex and Odin. Uh, I think both very defensible picks. Yes. I'm not hugely surprised. information there we go password is swordfish oh god no i don't want to play this game <laughs> no, <you don't laughs> that's not wanna, a thing i wanted to do <laughs> don't wanna step up and take on lorenzo <laughs> Did you say what the decks were? Uh, yeah, we have a Candle Holder versus Randolph. Oh, this is very exciting. So, um... so we have Gambling Den Shenanigans versus uh, Efficient Worlds Collide Board, basically. Um, uh, so, what do you think? Who do we think is going to take this first game? Um. I mean, it's, it's very hard to tell with the Gambling Den deck just how fast it's going to go. Um, and I guess it's somewhat dependent on the draw order. I don't think there's a lot of speed in there. Yeah, and you also have the problem of a double hawk in Randolph. Yes, but why would you do that? When you can have Gambling Den fun time. Uh, this is true. We will see if Lorenzo <laughs> chooses not to hawk the Gambling Dens out of Sheer, a sheer sense of risk and bravado. <laughs> uh, is that risk and bravado worth two ember or more? Yes, I think so. I think it is. Um, I think it'll be crying shame if we don't see some gambling den going on. I do really want to see a gambling den because the last time we saw this deck, it was very entertaining. Yeah. So the dream for me is Lorenzo gets both the hawks really early, gets in furnished. And it just becomes a gambling den based shenanigans game. Just who can hit the gambling denner? Gambling? Who can, who can gamble better? Yeah. Who is the who has the heart of the cards on their side? <laughs> and we are off. Uh, is the game on the stream? Um. Have I? Is it? I might be behind, but I just seem to be seeing us at the moment um yes I, I didn't think that um Rodian was in the game uh he has just arrived in the game oh okay I f5 for nothing <laughs> okay candle holder versus Randolph okay here we go and crystal 
There we go, featuring the lovely Archimedes logo. Oh, oh dear. I'll change no, it next not... game. It'll be fun. You're not bad. So, uh, on top we've got Rodian playing Candle Hold and Shrewdly Hardened. And on the bottom we've got Lorenzo playing uh, the World's Collide uh, deck. Uh, Randolph, I think, is the, the short name. Okay. Yep, we are good to go. So, uh, Lorenzo won the flip and is going first. Uh, apparently, Chief does some strategizing with Rodion, sorry. <laughs> Strong opening. Nice, nice. So, ends straight out of the gate. Yeah, amazing opening. Neither player mulligans, so uh, both happy with their opening hand. Yeah, and a I strong think you... extra efficiency there. <laughs> yep, oh. I mean, there we go. It's leader time. Yep, and it's and gambling then... time! Gambling Den straight off the bat, but an Anthony coming down as well, which we might be less happy with. But okay. then you have the opportunity to stir and grave them later. So both Anthony's, in fact. Yeah, and in fact, he could uh, grim reminder them as well, get them both. Uh, in the archives he could indeed. Too. So actually, that might be what, that might be what you're looking for with this deck. You d you definitely want to save them for later on, right? Yeah, now, it's to... uh, Lorenzo gets a free gamble. Oh, uh, he doesn't make it. Swing and a miss. Oh, this is this is what I hoped for. This is what I wanted. <laughs> so, uh, Logos turn for Lorenzo. Um, plays down hologramophone, fights Zenzik into Val Jericho and finishes it off with a twin bolt emission. Uh, and then discards an Edai. Uh, to uh. maintain Zenzik in centre of the battle line. Yeah, fair enough. Bit early in the day. Uh, uh, ooh, Rodian, that's a swing and a miss from Rodion. The gambling is not with them today. Can to see if I can keep track of how much how much embers won slash lost with the gambling down. <laughs> this may be a bad idea because it's going to be a lot either yeah. way. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, Rodian going into a Shadow's turn, he's attempting offer to return Zenzik to hand. Capturing on Anthony, sadly. Yep. No other option, unfortunately. Uh, we've got, uh, Boss Zarek, uh, making... Uh, is it all, at least all creatures with Amber on? Yeah. Uh, yeah, and Gambling Den number two! Ooh. Very tight. So Lorenzo gets the first opportunity to double gambling den. Okay, Jupiter, Jupiter's going to keep track of how much how much ever is one slash last of gambling. <laughs> uh, oh, so he's a flat out first. Uh, so obviously, if you predict incorrectly on the first gamble, you can predict correctly with certainty on the second gamble. So it's always at least a net zero. And this is the thing, Rodion here has gambling den check. If you can call this gambling den right, that is a key. So you've got to sort of adjust your strategy if you're Lorenzo, possibly. He's got to think what to do. How does he stop? Can he stop this? Or does he just have to face the gamble? Uh, ooh, can he try to goggle something? A hawk oh, will do it. Lorenzo has hawks one of the gambling dens. Has chosen to hawk the gambling den, which is obviously a very reasonable and defensible call. I mean, this, uh, of course instantly gives Rodian the moral victory uh, uh, for yeah, it's believing true. in the heart of the gambling dens. Uh, but at the same time with gambling a real menace in society is Lorenzo taking a, a moral stance against it. You will not have this sort of gambling in this establishment. Shocked, shocked to find out there is gambling going on here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, Rodian taking time, perhaps considering whether or um, to gambling then or not, decides not to and goes into shadows. Uh, yeah, best I think... card in the game, Mutant Cut Purse come down. Uh, someone will correct me if I'm wrong, but I think if you have only one gambling then, you uh, only gamble if you have either less than two ember or the chance of watch key. That's usually how I've gambled in the past. Uh, Instinct chooses to just ding Zens for a damage and not recycle that red penny. Uh, just going for board presence instead. Goes to check at six. Passes back to Lorenzo. 
so uh, Lorenzo's pri prioritised his hand size over anything else in the game so far. Uh, let's see if that's paid off. Uh, I think reasonable, because especially if you're looking for things, if you're looking for that second hawk to try and turn off the gambling shenanigans. Uh, it does appear that he is considering whether or not to gamble. Well, he's on three, so it is a risky gamble. Uh, we've seen a lot of logos so far, and not much else. Uh, so that might so, increase um, his odds. Six logos cards on in the play area and discard. Uh, decides not to gamble. Um, plays uh, friends to allow Ronnie to trigger to steal two, and gets rid of the other gambling den. This is very upsetting. Uh, yeah, and you've got to think, as much as we make jokes, this is a genuine setback for Candleholder uh, and Rodion. That, that is a reasonably solid part of its strategy. Uh, so he's now back to sort of playing a, a more normal game of Keyforge. And we will see whether that constitutes. Uh, Lorenzo here choosing to mug Boss Zarek twice just to get rid of that elusive. For things then Braun. Goes to 10 here, which is pretty big pretty early on, especially with both Antonys still on the board. Gets that Bren down, keeps Zenzi in the middle, so it's just sort of all coming together very nicely so far. So, what are we looking like in terms of. So uh, there's eight we... Shadows cards um, in the discard and board for Rodian. Um, leads me to believe he has a handful of discs right now. Um, potentially we've got the Infernuses coming down. Yep, there are three of them. So it's Star Alliance though. So perhaps not having an Infernus. Mm. Just going to stop cycling. Yeah, chooses to chooses disc to go looking for the Infernuses. Uh, does not find any, but does find a gateway to death, but at the cost of losing the Miasma Bomb. Uh, so, mm, swings and roundabouts, I think, there. Just going to reap with Anthony. I'd be interested to see if he... F yeah, fights Zens off the board. I think because that frees you up to Stirring Grave and Anthony later. For max value. But first blood goes to Lorenzo with perfectly normal key for six and is already on four for a second yeah and with a brand on the board as well uh, and obviously a good chunk of ways to remove that brand yeah and he oh. does immediately quinchino flux to kill the brand yep goes to eight straight back up there and parts a yep. huge Gets star a hit the... turn yeah hasn't played star lights yet someone's saving it up Gets the big hit there. And things are looking pretty bad for, for Rodian. Yes. He needs to, I think, start finding some member control. Uh, and this is a problem. The deck has th uh, 8.5 recursion with the Grim Reminders and the Stirring Graves, but only 3.7 speed. Yes. Um, it's going to be an issue to find what you need. Um, yeah. So Lorenzo's revealed that he's got a TMTP in hand uh, and archived it with the grey, so... Yeah, and that's a power... That's a, power that's, a, that's a flex. That's a power move right there. Yeah. You're like, oh yeah, I got it. What are you going to do? Uh, but we have Rodian going into a disc turn now. Gateways uh, to clear all of that Star Alliance sensibly off the board. Uh, yeah, I think that did need to happen. Does he have some Infernuses now? So we have a snudge. Um, okay, in furnace number one. Capture two. So we'll take him off check here, I assume. Probably the hawks. I could see a hawk and a quintrina flux. Um, potentially both hawks, potentially both uh, twin bolts. I mean, could mix it up a little bit. Um, probably prioritizing the pips here. Yeah, certainly two pips to take a check. Both twin bolts. That's interesting. Going for removal. And staring grave to archive uh, one of the Antonies. Uh, 
solid play. And another stone grave. Will the second Anthony be picked up? Uh, I would think so. Not many other creatures in the discard pile that he want back. Maybe Valjerico? Yes. But I think that's pretty much it. The rest are mediocre at best. I think uh, if you're behind at this stage of the game, that having both Anthony's is a better idea. Um, considering that Lorenzo's got no way of um, getting those out of hand. I might be wrong. Yeah, especially as he... I think that's why he prioritised the removal. So he went for a Val Jericho. So he takes an Anthony of Val Jericho back, so he's just looking to set up some capture and some huge efficiency. Uh, goes to check at six, but with two chains. Lorenzo, I think, is still here very much in the driving seat. Um, bit unfortunate losing that board. But with the um, signs of Sir Morpheus down at the same time, he did get a lot of efficiency out of that turn. Yeah, got the double archive. Flex, you got the TMTP there. Uh, Rodion, I think, perhaps missing the opportunity to leave Infernus on the flank, but obviously can just run Darkmean into something to open up some Snudge Infernus shenanigans. Uh, and that might be the plan, to be fair. I've I've seen this. I've seen that feint before, and it's caught me out. Okay, so it is artifact time. Yeah, Lorenzo sort of. Uh, yep, seeing that Infernus play coming, discards Quant, so you can't just infer <laughs> snudge your Infernus. Uh, uh, obviously, there's a, there's a very reasonable chance he has another Infernus. So, uh, Brodian forges his first key. So he does. Now, oh, he does have those two Star Alliance cards in his archive does, so can just capture all of the Ember. Does he have enough Star Alliance creatures to center Val Jericho? That's a good question. Uh, Although, one of his Anthony's did have a damage pip. So... It did, so I think that will help, but it's going dis, so I've got to think it's going to be an Infernus coming down. Yep, uh, one on the flank that can be snudged. Um, maybe get rid of those hocks this time. And there it is. So this is going to be pretty brutal. Um, so we're going to get a double in furnacing, I imagine. And things are starting to look up for Rodian, I think, with this play. If he didn't have an Infernus here, he might be in trouble. But he's going to purge four cards, probably taking down to two, maybe three if he purges something else. There's lots of really great options to take out of Lorenzo's discard right now. Yeah, you could take the Hawks, you could go for Brend, you could go for Quintrino Flux. Um, get rid of the uh, Edai, the Morpheus. Edai. Yeah, plenty. And Mega both Hawks are gone! Okay. Gambling has been re-legalized! Excellent. Well, not quite yet. They're not yet on the board, but they could be in the future. Yep. Soon, soon, soon. Just gonna reap with snudge, and I think with this turn, I would I would probably nudge it back in Rodion's favor because he's got a good disc board going on. Uh, if Lorenzo doesn't answer this immediately, it's gonna happen again, oh, and his deck is gonna be picked apart. And Lorenzo, we know, so Rodion, we know, has the Anthony and the Jet Valjerico in the archive. Uh, Infernus is the two mugs. Which I think is very sensible if you have two Antonies and a lot of other capture knocking around. Yep, and those are the last cards with pips out of the discard pile. So um, <laughs> the enough. next options are going to be more strategic. Uh, but just for the raw power. Let's get those out there. Okay. And we've got Val Jericho down. So any other removal we might see coming out here. Nope. Sets up an intimidating looking Star Alliance board for sure. With the frames and the Jericho and the Tabor. Does not stop the Snudge Infernus combo. So we do now have the question of what Rodion does here. What Does he have things to answer this board? Does he continue with the disc to basically snudge everything? So, uh, the gateway is gone. 
Uh, Quintino Flux is still in the deck. Uh, yes, hand. we've not seen that yet. Uh, which would be reasonable. Those are your big hits, I think. Uh, you could always just fight some things. Could, like, fight one in Furnace into Frame, fight the other Furnace into Tabor, reap with the Snudge. So you've got some, got some fighty options. I am not a big fighter in Keyforge. I often neglect this, as you can tell by the fact that that was the third solution that I went to after <laughs> playing cards. I was like, oh yeah, you can just fight creatures off the board. That's a thing that you can do in this game. Yeah, and, and Furnace is a card that you want to kill off as quickly as possible, mm, usually. Yeah. Uh, he's going to go Star Alliance on Archive things. Yeah. There's Quintino. the Quintrino Flux. So, yeah, hits fours and fives, leaving Lorenzo with a solitary Tabor and gets to put his Valjerico back in the middle pretty easily. Uh, and behind a security droid, which is handy. Yeah, really nice to have that taunted. Uh, and oh. he's also set up uh, to have the Anthony taunted as well, and he wants to play that. Uh, might hold it for now because obviously it's a bit early uh but he's gonna play the grim reminder and archive what was that uh the two, two infernuses in and the snudge two infernuses and a snudge oh it's brutal it's savage and we've got the antony uh conscious i think that he's not got the full value out of it does not taunt it, put it into a position where um, he can run it into something or it can be killed off. Yeah, wants to start cycling back around. And very even game so far. Lorenzo made a pretty good early burst, but um, Rodion punching back massively with the disc, uh, just purging out a lot of crucial pieces Lorenzo would use in that burst so far. So yeah. Lorenzo going to go Star Alliance is, is going to get a reap off this Tabor, which could do some pretty disgusting things. But what have we got left? There is a red alert in the Star Alliance that could happen now that might be useful. Uh, yes, I suppose he could run the Tabor into the Antony and then red alert. Uh, just going to spread some damage around with Zap. And there's the red alert. And an anomaly exploited uh, to get rid of Valderico. Very nice. Just a little bit of out of house efficiency from Tabor. Yeah. So Lorenzo has turn. now flipped his deck, so there is nothing in the discard pile for Rodian to take out. Uh, and you'll notice that it is uh, 17 cards with three in the archive, six in hand, and four on the board. So he's a sixth of his deck down, thanks to Mr. I Furnace. I guess the question is, might Rodian want to start getting rid of some of the dross in his own deck? Uh, he might. Uh, that is always a sort of delicate balance that you can pull off in a deck with this many infernuses. I know a lot of the British players are keen on the self-purge, where you just reduce your deck down to nothing. Uh, but I've never been able to have the patience to do that. <laughs> uh, Mugs' his own Anthony. Uh, plays a rad penny to steal one, so goes to check, gets his Anthony back in the discard pile, ready for a third stirring grave, perhaps. And what's Lorenzo got in terms of Ember Control? We know he has the TMTP, and um, we have. We ha I don't think we've seen the Trust No one, so I've got to assume that's the one of the other things in the archive. So there's the combination of the Brend and the Ronnies that uh, Lorenzo did earlier. Uh, that will take Rodian down to five. There's also uh, the Edai, which would get a lot of value out of that archive now. So there, uh, there are options. Uh, there are indeed options, and he's taking some time to think of them. Uh, Jupiter, whose deck this is, says that for the balance of the gambling den, he is going to start stealing stuff. Uh, sorry, purging stuff from his own deck. So hits with the trust no one for one. Starts to put down some other shadows. So he's now essentially trying to bait the TMTP. So we see a Breaker Hill, we see a J Binder, we see a Yancey Gang. 
all sort of getting on the board steal ready. So if, if Rodion goes big here, he can uh, TMTP and then steal a couple more. And now going back to Rodion, still not got um, good options to purge from Lorenzo's discard. So uh, potentially no. as Jupiter has said, may consider purging his own discard pile to make the gambling den calls a little bit easier. Oh. Got some tempting offers you could purge, got an opportunity you could probably live without. Yeah, Mug, does he need that? It's okay. useful but not essential. Uh, yeah, so we just know he has two Infernuses just sitting in the discard pile. Uh, we are 20 minutes out of 35 into this game now. We are one key apiece with a whole bunch of Ember Control remaining, so half an eye on the timer here, I think. It might be me being paranoid. I mean, a lot can happen in 15 minutes, and there's a lot to consider. Uh, yeah, there is. Uh, I wasn't criticizing their play at all. It is certainly a lot of complicated decisions happening. Mm. And when you consider that the winner of this will advance to the top eight of KFKL Season 2, quite a bit on the line so uh, huge amounts of team pride and glory at stake mm -hmm. just thinking it over does he go for the purge what does he purge if so um let's have a look in the discard and see which is like I mean, he does also building. kind of have to deal with his board right because you're gonna have couple of steals and some reaps happening every turn unless you can find a way to get rid of them. Right, so uh, eight discards between the Dis and the Archive. Um, and he goes Has Dis. gone Dis. Does pick up the Archives. So we are going to get some Infernising. So, uh, Rodian had a look at the steel on the other side of the board, says, okay, that's fine. Um, I will deal with that. Just give me a second to set up my things. Stirring Graves, the Antony. Uh, does get to ding the Breaker Hill with the damage pip on the Infernus. Goes for his own discard pile. So the self purge begins. Uh, and this is where, like, practice with the deck really starts to come through because you will know what you can live without what things do you, what things are non-essential out of this discard pile uh, what can i uh has gone for opportunist and new frontiers yeah that makes new, sense new frontier is an interesting choice i wouldn't have necessarily gone there you lose just some of the minimal efficiency that you actually have Okay, next Infernus is on the board. So, probably to go back to his own discard pile again. Uh, it doesn't make sense to help Lorenzo out by getting rid of a Breaker Hill. Uh, probably not, no. So, oh, this is, uh, this is brutal to I watch. imagine he will continue to go for Shadows and Star Alliance. Uh, to make this the most common option in the discard pile and draw. Yep, he takes one of each out. Yep. Gets the tempting off of the pip, reduces Lorenzo to zero, with a very scary looking Snudge Infernus combo on the board. Uh, so Lorenzo is going for Star Alliance, comes down with Navigator Ali, so he's going to look and rearrange some things. Not the best card, Navigator Ali, but it's fine, it's kind of useful. Uh, flavor text if Ali uh, says we, we're lost we're really lost uh, uh, very nice play so reaps with the Tabor uh, to reap with the Javinder to take out the Snudge and steal one at the same time and takes Radian off check yeah very big because obviously we know he has the TMTP in hand so he's going to want to keep him just under check to try and make him go high. Make him go high. Yeah, 
that. So this is a sticky situation Rodian's going to stay in unless he takes care of the Yancey gang and the Jay Bender. Um, it's always going to be, oh, you go just above check and you steal a couple to take you off. But if you go too high, it's TMTP. Yep. Could. Hmm. Yeah, I don't. Could fight twice into the J Vinder, kill it with the Umbra Fiend to steal one, go to six. Maybe re go to seven or just a fight. Because obviously the, the, the Yancey Gang can always take him off check, but if that's your only Shadow's action. Uh. So a lot to consider here. Rodian is very close to flipping his deck. Uh, and this is the thing. This is where the gambling dance would really come in and be super good. Because obviously if you just have a semi-decent shot at getting a key every turn, stuff like the TMTP is not going to help you. Uh, brief nudge from Lorenzo about watching the time. Uh, so as we dip under 10 minutes. Which I think is is not unreasonable. No one wants the game to go to time, really. It's much more fun if we can finish it uh, in the prescribed time. We don't have to have weird tiebreakers that don't make any sense. Okay, Lorenzo giving a grim reminder there. <laughs> hey! Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah, I you've mean, got three yeah. hours this tonight. Yeah, this is game <laughs> one of six, potentially. <laughs> uh, hope the audience is enjoying these puns. <laughs> Rolling my eyes. Uh, it's going to be our diss, but it's sort of thinking it over still. Fights the Tabor. Fights another Infernus, okay. Okay. Maybe get some more stuff out of Radian's... Yep, out uh, of the discard. Yep, has got, some got more his... Shadows, some more Star Alliance. Make that maths a little bit easier. Uh, tempting offer on Mug. Uh, yeah, so is, I guess, trying to reduce the... I guess trying to rebalance things in favor of the gambling den, possibly. Uh, it does reap. Uh, reaps the uh, to, uh, The problem here is he can just take a shadow's turn and steal with the anti gang, and then reap steal with J Vinder. And I would be very tempted to do that, as it will put you back on six. I think, if I'm doing maths correctly. Uh, Lorenzo now is going to weigh this up. Yeah, so uh, he has got the option to call shadows, steal to pass turn. Very tempting with the TMTP in hand. But does just go for it, and it's just going for big steal instead. Yeah, so... Um... He's been chaining himself with that TMTP for a really long time. You saw it very early yeah. in the game going into the archive. Uh, so... Doesn't want to take any shadow turns anymore time, time soon, so plays a Ronnie to steal two. Steals one with the anti gang, steals one with the Vinder, knocking Rodian back down to three. Yeah, I think a sensible decision, decision to get rid of the TMTP. Uh, Rodian's clearly playing around it, and in the kind of attrition that's happening, uh, he definitely comes out on top if Lorenzo just holds it. So, pitch it, get the Yeah, also worth knowing, only six minutes left. So, half an eye on the timer here, I think. We did see a reminder. We are going to see an Anthony, I assume, uh, with this Star Alliance play. And a piece of cord. Uh, well, that's very interesting. Didn't pick up his archives, we might not be seeing an Anthony. Um, he picked up his archive earlier, didn't he? So, uh, he may have... Uh, ah, he's got Xeno training. Yep, so with the Garcia, that will in fact uh, just make him forge for eight. I guess wants to hold on the, hold on to the, uh, hold on to the Anthony for another time. But Lorenzo does get key two. Uh, and that is not nothing with six minutes remaining. Because uh, obviously if he can keep uh, Rodion off check for the next six minutes, 
he is potentially going to win here. Mm -hmm. um, could do it on the board still with shadows, but I've got to think he doesn't want to take another shadow turn. Yeah, so uh, there's four shadows cards purged and then um, three in a discard, three on the board. So that would mean ten between his hand and draw. Uh, yeah, so fights Navigator Ali, just to ditch the piece of cord when he doesn't lose any Ember, plays a red alert, kills you things, drops a Valjerico. But the red, uh, Rodion does get key two. So with just under five minutes remaining, we are two keys apiece. Lorenzo having a slight edge of one amber and more things on the board. Um, I think with the archived Anthony, Rodion is in a slightly better position here. Hits the gateway to disc, clears off the board, puts those two in furnace discard pile. Lorenzo going back very quickly into Logos, uh, hitting the Tauta Vapors for some draw. Rodion reshuffled, so we'll see if we see the gambling dens anytime soon. Uh, Lorenzo dropping a serious amount of efficiency. Double Quant, Jargogel, which is going to ward two of uh, Double Quant. So just now has the ability to play two cards, uh, two non logos action cards, straight out of hand. Uh, we have some Gogo Lorenzo support from Kiwi in the chat. Uh, Bo Nithing, haven't seen that yet, just coming straight out. And Rad Penny with another steal. Ooh, and the Vault's Blessing and Shadows. The Maverick Vault's Blessing taking him to seven Ember. Now, we do have Fetch Drones on the board. Uh, can we work out what those remaining three cards are and if they are Logos cards? Yes, so. Uh... Potentially. Uh, I mean, we can't work it out. Potentially. Cause... Potentially, yes. But obviously, we don't know what's in his hand. Um, I mean, but does have two quants. It depends what's in the the archive and the hand. Uh, it so does, and we can more than that. We've got um, two twin bolts purged for a total of nine, then the Tau Tau. So there's two Logos cards uh, yeah. lying around. He's going to go with Logos, so we're not seeing the frame. So I think if either he has an E die on hand, which he could have, uh, or we got to see some fetch drones action, or there's something under the jar goggle which could do it. Ooh, plays the Brend, which is bold. Uh, um, unless he can take it out immediately with this Quant play. Quintrian. Which he can! Yes. Oh, look at that. That is some beautiful efficiency that we had. Basically set up by Lorenzo on the previous turn when he put the Brend under the Jargogel, thinking he would be able to go Logos next turn. And now we see an Edai and a Zens. The Edai gets warded. Lorenzo goes to six. And flips his deck for a second time. Second time indeed, in 14 turns. Pretty fast. I suppose quite a bit of it has been purged. <laughs> so, uh, we have an Infernus potentially floating around from Rodion. We have a, an Antony in the archives. Yes, yeah, so now is the time you have to Antony, right? This is a do or uh, die kind of moment. I guess he does have the Miasma Bomb. Does half the miasma bomb. Uh, it's got a feeling it's going to come down to time, this one. Unless he can generate quite a bit of ember on this Star Alliance turn. Okay, so he's gone into the Star Alliance, uh, plays down yep. the Antony, um, and pops the ward on the Yidai. Very useful, potentially. And gets rid of it with Puccino Flux. Of his Puccino own. Flux. <laughs> yep, and then puts the red, the red penny back. Zeno training goes to six. Very quick star lines from Lorenzo, so we're going to think some frames. Oh, now Garcia. Yep. Got some Morpheus shenanigans going on. Oh, this is a brutal Morpheus. Reveals a Yancey gang. And there's another frame to capture, too. And Zenzi's still in the middle. And another frame. Oh, my God. So he was very clearly holding on to a massive star lines turn. 50 seconds left. Huge board from uh, Lorenzo. Uh, huge amounts of Ember captured on both sides. Okay, Rodian going into a dis turn. 
Uh, so I wonder if it's going to see some Infernuses come down. He's got a Grim Reminder, all of the Infernuses. Got a Stirring Grave. For Bow Nithing. Stirring Grave something else. Garcia, so he's just, he doesn't get to check, so ball back in Lorenzo's court here. With 10 seconds remaining, I think just needs to generate as much Ember as he possibly can, right? Yeah, I mean, um, if he were to reap out on Star Alliance now, catch two with the frames, um, it would be massive. Uh, time is up. Um, you've got some time to consider. Yes. Unfortunately, the game comes down to time. Unavoidable fact of the game. Uh, it's a bit of a shame here when... Uh, it's as close as it is, especially with the Miasma Bomb on the board still. So, I mean, fight Anthony twice, reap one, two, three, four times. Put yourself on 10 Ember. Jupiter's asking if you have the rules, Kate. Yes. Uh, unfortunately, Radion wants to continue the game anyway. Unfortunately, I think by the rules of the tournament, uh, the time must be decisive. Um, I think for the integrity of the event and fairness to all of the other participants, we need to abide by time rules. Uh, yes. Do you want to step in here, uh, Kate? Jupiter's... Uh, I think not unreasonably not wanted to do that right now. Uh, given it is his teammate, I think that's why. Yep, very reasonable. Uh, so he is just going to go Star Alliance. Muffin's just laying out the time rules for everyone. Yeah, I'm sure everyone's aware at this point, but just to make it, you know... Fair yeah, and I think between the heavy capture and the uh, huge amounts of reaping I think he's doing. I wonder if he has a way to take out the... Yes, he does, okay. So he puts himself to 12 Ember... Uh, which I think might have been enough anyway, uh, unless Rodion. This is the Miles and Bob. I, I shouldn't shouldn't get into it. Yeah, I mean, twelve with six creatures on the board is very difficult to beat. Yeah, and, and especially with two frames. Um, I guess if Rodion has yeah, Anthony know. available, he just wins. Uh, he needed our uh, Do we know whether he's turn? Did he? No, he archived all the disc creatures. He archived a bow and a Garcia. Oh, yes, of course. So, does not have it in his hand, as he's now saying. So, I think that might be it. So, um, Radian seeing if he can do anything uh, with the tools that he has available seven cards in the archive, five in the hand. I don't think he can get Lorenzo down far enough where he can have more Ember. Infernus, unfortunately, won't do it at this point. So, to be honest, it does look like the sort of ever-so-clever, like, Chargoggle, Bren, Quintrino Flux play with um, the Quant. All three houses at once. You know, two houses at once. Um, does seem to have clinched it for Lorenzo. Just gave him enough Ember kept Rodion down far enough where I don't think Rodion can now recover. Yeah, still worthwhile reviewing your options. Yeah, he's taking shadows. his time. There's no criticisms there. And takes archives. So, so we have a bow. We have a rad penny. Uh, I wonder if he has the vault's blessing. No, he doesn't. Uh, is this the discard? Uh, Does the Miasma Bomb? 
anyway. And concedes the game. Lorenzo yep. wins. Uh, all right. So game one on time goes to Lorenzo in a very close game. I think much closer than I thought it would be. We talked about how much the decks the deck relied on the gambling dance. And it didn't really have any success in the gambling then. They were hawked very early. And still, it was a pretty close game. Yeah, it was very back and forth throughout. Uh, the Infernuses did get some value there. But unfortunately, um, Radiant's deck is just not um, efficient. So uh, the, the speed at which Lorenzo was getting through his deck, getting the card effects, um, triggering those Star Alliance play effects over and over, uh, it's just too much to deal with. Yeah, took out Brend with Crunchino Flux twice. Uh, and, yeah, just took an Ephemera away. Very well played by both players, I think. Uh, so, uh, so, we're just getting game two sorted out. I'll depart. Uh, so, game one goes to the Hamburg Atlanteans. Shout out to all of them in the chat. They are cheering things on. Yeah, it was extremely unfortunate that all three Hamburg Atlantean A's got into the same group stage. Uh, um, yeah, but, that uh, was bad luck of the draw for them. Yeah, um, you know, Lorenzo having proved himself uh, worthy, uh, victorious, <laughs> um, is is going on to show uh, why he came out um, so highly in that group. Yeah, I assume he's now like in fully in charge of Hamburg. Makes all their decisions for mm -hmm, them. Mm -hmm. Just uh, owns all of the decks now. They just had to donate them all to him specifically. Got a nice throne uh, he gets to sit on. Uh, having proved himself the most Atlantean. Presumably a trident of some sort. Okay, uh, so... Um, still waiting for the next game. So, um, what deck is Lorenzo moving on to? It's Special uh, Sandstorm Grief World. Uh, yes, it is indeed. Uh, so, no hard artifact control here, uh, unfortunately. Uh, but we do have some other shenanigans. So, there's two Skippy Time Hogs. Uh, Purifier of Souls will be nice. Uh, yeah, so basically, the deck just shuts down almost anything you're trying to do, but it doesn't shut down the gambling dance. So, that might be what helps it overcome the. Relentless oppression. Uh, the question is sort of whether the deck you're looking at on the other side has the required board control. Because uh, that's the thing you know, sort of getting sort of big, chunky sanctum boards. Uh, they're just going through the rounds of trying to get the right player first. I think is what's happening at the yes. moment. Uh, so, um, do we think the um, Radian will stick or twist? Um, I would, uh, well, I know for a fact that he is sticking. We could have, we could have uh, had some suspense. The people on the stream didn't know that. Sorry, I was going to say, <laughs> uh, well, not knowing what he has chosen. Uh, yes, so I don't we do not know. Uh, I think he probably does stick with Candle Holder any, most times anyway, because it seems like the sort of deck um, that you need multiple shots at. Okay, uh, we've got a, a valid game up. I think we do have the right the right people in the right places. Oh yes, I want to change my background, don't I? Oh, you don't have to. I the forgot. Team Arcade Wings logo ah. is very nice. I mean, we we do have a new Team Screech for Bob logo that we just got oh, very finished. Nice. That we just got drawn by someone. Just uh, uh, yeah, get that shout out in there. Uh, yes, that I am uh, very humbly a guest on uh, Muffin's channel. She's invited me here, and I'm doing all the talking, which is <laughs> not atypical of my general life. Uh, but we do have our own channel over at uh, Screech Bomb Commentaries. It's just Screech Bomb on Twitch. Uh, and we are going to see Candleholder, and Rodion is just going to open up with a Garcia. 
Yep, so uh, neither player mulliganed, uh, both happy with their opening hands. Lorenzo getting a very nice sanctum turn out here. And five oh, cards. I can... Five cards, yeah. And also four damage pips as well, so we're just able to gun down that Garcia. And yeah. that, that is a big start. If there is not an answer to the sanctum board quickly, you could very easily just get Lorenzo running away with this. Yeah, so uh, we know in Radian's deck you've got Gateway and Quintrino Flux. Um, I think those are the two main options, right? Is there a red alert as well? Uh, no. That is not a red alert. Uh, so, um, Radian going for the self purge. Uh, interesting, because uh, I wouldn't have wanted. I wouldn't have thought you'd want to take out the stirring grace, and doesn't no. in fact. Uh, well, then I guess Didn't no discard have... pile for Lorenzo, no Ember to take anyway, so it just puts it down. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, yeah, obviously Sanctum from Lorenzo, I think, very clear choice. Yeah, play the board. Especially when you've got uh, some more in your hand, even more. Oh, that is some chonk. Yeah, this deck can put out some chonk pretty consistently, and it's a problem. Yeah, so uh, uh, the Bulwark Sort uh, helps to take care of the Anguish. Um, currently clearing out the rest of Radiant's Ward apart from the Infernus, which is the only one he wanted in the discard pile. Yep. Um, and gets a fight off with Baldrick the Bold uh, to gain two Ember, puts himself to five, and five knights are on the board still. And uses Ember Heart to ward the Scrivener Fabian for a lot of steel, potentially, and then equalizes some of the Ember away from Gorvanov. So how many capture pips do we have in this deck? Uh, a good number, actually. There is seven. Oof. Okay. So that's potentially a lot of steel if that Fabian uh, sticks. Yes. And I think one of the reasons he's warded it is most of them are not in the Sanctum. Uh, Radian goes so. into another disc turn, plays down a second Infernus. There are items right. uh, to get rid of now, so you can get rid of that Equalize and yep. the Salvador. Uh, Equalize potentially very important in this matchup with double Antonys. Mm. So probably happy to see that go pretty early. Uh, fights off the Baldric, puts the Infernus in the discard pile, and Grim Reminders the Infernus. And the Snudge and the, and the Anguish. Snudge. And the Anguish. Just getting all of that horrible, horrible disc bag. And mm -hmm. um, with the Damage Pit, pings the ward off of Scrivener Fabian. Uh, yep, so still on the board for now but will hopefully be easier to remove in the future. Renzo, I think, could be very tempted by another Sanctum turn here. Uh, if he's got any of it in hand. I think I would be if I was him. Even if you don't, like, just reap four times. And and right now is the perfect time to get rid of that Dark Minion because the destroyed effect won't trigger. Uh, absolutely, and he does have another thing in hand. Uh, the Dino Knight, is he going to exalt it? I probably I'm not sure he him, does. But... Well, you would or would No, just come for. Yep, does take out the Dark Minion. Purifier of Souls, turning off the Destroyed effect. And it's gonna just reap up to seven and reward the Fabian. Yep. Quite happily back at check now. Uh, for his first key. Um. And Radian's got a lot of discards in his archives, uh, but goes into Shadows this turn, plays out a Miasma Bomb. Um, setting up some things for the future. I imagine at this point he wants to mill through his hands to try and get one of those board wipes to tackle this Sanctum board. Yeah, that like ain't shifting right now. If I'm if I'm in his position at this point, my brain is hitting uh, panic mode. Uh, burn nothing for nothing. Best card in the game, Mutant Cut Purse. Uh, with the damage pip to ping the Scurrying Fabian again. So we're still trying to get rid of that Fabian. Oh. Can now tempting offer something. Maybe Fabian. Maybe. Yeah, Fabian is a sensible choice uh, as the capture pips, as you say, are in different houses. So. Yeah, but Lorenzo hitting the... Uh, Hitting the first key very early, after only four turns. And he's going to go Sanctum again, because this board is still there. Yep. And he's drawn some more. I mean, why Why wouldn't you at this point? Yeah, I'm, it's obviously the correct call, I think. Yeah, 
Um, I mean, Rodian's got those two cards in his deck that he needs to counter this. Other than that, he could use the board, but um, yeah, just Lorenzo reward is the very Fabian. effectively for controlling the board here. Uh, maybe stacking up uh, Ember on the creatures with the Ember Heart a little too much, but seems to know what he's doing. Gets the ward out of it as well. Yeah, um, it seems the Fabian is is quite key um, with the capture pips as um, control in the deck. So yeah, it's a big part of the Ember control. We do now have the gateway. Uh, so he's gonna inferno some stuff. He's gonna dump down this miserable disboard. Uh, so we do have uh, eight of uh, nine of Lorenzo's uh, sanctum cards having been played already. So I've got to assume he could have a pretty good turn at this point Sorry, from either ten. of the other two houses. Um, uh, we'll be. So purges um, his own cards, tempting off her and a stirring grave. Um, uh, stirring grave is rough. That's not a great thing you want to be purging from your own deck. Yeah, uh, and I mean there are options in that discard pile. So uh, you maybe not don't want to get rid of the bone iving, but potentially could get rid of the dark minion and the moon cut purse. But he goes for Lorenzo's discard, takes out some of those sanctum chonky boys. So Lorenzo going Logos. He's going to start cycling. I wonder if we'll see a Skippy Time Hog here. Yeah, Cronus uh, with a draw pip on. Very nice. I'll just get some instant archive. Daughter with a draw pip and a capture. So he's yeah. going to steal one. And archive another card. Getting a huge amount of efficiency off this turn. Ooh, potentially scary Adaptoid. Mm-hmm. And yeah, he's just dropping down these Logos creatures, getting huge amounts of draw, big amounts of archive, and just setting up for something extra in the future. Does not deal with the Discord, though, so we do have the possibility for a bunch more Infernising to happen with the Snudge. Yeah, uh, but obviously... Potential to get some damage onto that Anguish. They fight the Fabian off the board. So I think I think a turn where uh, Lorenzo, uh, where sorry, Rodian gets a little bit of a breather, has a chance to use a board now and not just cycle desperately for a board wipe. Yes. Um, so Rodian hasn't played Star Alliance yet, so I imagine he's holding a lot of that. Uh, potentially yes. So we could see some Quintrino fluxes. Uh, that actually could be quite strong here. Taking his time, considering his options, uh, there are good things to purge, and he does go for the disc turn. Yeah, it's just plenty of options in a deck like Candle Holder. Yep, I mean, four creatures on the board, uh, an Inferno that you can snudge. I mean, even without going into stuff in hand, it is a great turn. Okay, so we got this. Yeah, I think the sequencing in this turn is going to be quite important. Yeah, also you've got to think about what you fight. So he fights the, the Fabian off the board, finally. Um. Yep, so his capture pips becoming less of a threat now. Yep, so we'll use the Snudge, I imagine, to replay an Infernus. Yep, and capture an extra amber. Um, get some purge out, perhaps getting rid of that Favian. Could just get us to the reaps. So leaves Cronus on the board, leaves Daughter with the Discombobulator on the board. Uh... Yeah, I mean, I suppose that Radiant's deck. You know, the bone iving is gone. Um, maybe doesn't want to prioritize stealing right now. So. Yeah, it's not the steeliest deck. Captures one on anguish. It's gonna purge some more things. I mean, uh, um, hits the 
It's the favourite of the eclectic inquiry, which I think is very sensible. And Rodian checks for his first key. Now, Rodian's deck has quite a clear game plan, right? So he's he's setting up for his game plan. But Lorenzo's decks are all quite um, flexible, reactionary. They can deal with whatever. So, um, you know, they are playing in very different styles. This is very true. Um, so let's go to Logos again. Sloppy lab work. Building up that archive. Uh, yeah, sloppy lab work uh, has, I think, two draw icons on it. So it's an incredibly efficient okay. card in this deck. Wow, yep. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and we'll presumably be doing some adaptoid shenanigans if he can make it live. Just to be going through a bunch of triggers. It's just gone up to seven with the Kronos now. Okay, so the yeah, that, that yeah. the adaptor is just on two armor right now. Um, five yeah, just gonna... off the board. Uh, Lorenzo going to six and has built himself up a nine a nine card archive. That is is very silly. Yep, it is. I wonder if that is <laughs> just all his discards. We haven't seen any of them. I I wouldn't be surprised if he doesn't. If he just leaves them there and doesn't call this because with that set up how it is, how can Rodian play those gambling dens? Yeah, potentially true. Yeah, if you've just thinned out your house to two cards, to two thinned out your decks to two houses. And Radiant uh, finally calls Star Alliance, goes and plays some creatures. Just trying to filter. I wonder if we will now see an Anthony. Yeah, I mean, it would make sense to play one now. Uh, but he's got Xeno training, so I uh, can get those uh, Amber onto creatures where they won't instantly give it back. Uh, yeah, but does not have the Anthony, so or doesn't play the Anthony. Yep, so we get Logos again for Lorenzo. I think because if he's just been filtering out the dis and all of the Sanctum came very early, probably a whole bunch of it. Yeah. And again, you know, you've got four creatures on the board. You might as well play the board. It's very reasonable. Got some stuff you can fight because you don't really care about Infomorph. Maybe do some Adaptoid shenanigans. And the thing is, as well, the more he archives his deck, the less opportunity um, Rodian's going to have to ping um, Amber off him with the Infernuses. Yeah, because obviously a lot of the pips have gone. Stuff you would want to take out, you can't. Uh, There's the Skippy, skippy Time Hog. Skippy so the that Time big, Kangaroo. That big board just coming and locking it down. With Skippy Time Hog, it's just shutting him out. So no cards used next turn. Uh, he's just gonna fight some stuff on the board. Gets a steal with the Adaptoid, always very nice. And it's gonna reap up and go to check at seven. Yeah, and with the Garcia gone and unable to be used anyway, Miasma Bomb not able to be used. It does look like uh, Lorenzo uh, has secured that second key. Uh, and he plays the opposition research in case you just. Uh, yeah. You, you extra wanted to use some cards. So it is going to go Shadows. So. Just play the gambling oh, den. It's time. Both gambling dens. The double is very risky right now. Uh, Lorenzo does have only seven cards in his draw pile. Yeah. Uh, so. And now, obviously, you can't steal because the Discombobulator is still about. So any rad pennies are not going to do anything. Could capture some capture pips elsewhere, I think, on at least one of the Shadows cards. Can't play the Vault's Blessing because of too many mutants on the other side. Four, in fact. Yeah. Um, I suppose he can mug his own could anguish. Mug the could mug the daughter. Uh, to get rid of the steel is going to just mug the anguish so up the keys to eight and that's it but it is gambling time everybody here we go uh, and oh! is gonna get the double instant hit hits the double with the one sanctum card left as well 
There's barely any sanctum left in the deck. Yes. So um, yeah. Lorenzo's actually in a situation now where he could just free pout with the Logos. Uh, maybe not the Bookton, um, but takes his archive. Uh, got yeah, all so of I the could, discards. I could just see a mark of dis here yep. and a huge number of pips coming to just turn it all off and then Oh, if only just there finish were a way out. to use that adaptoid. Alas. But yeah, so we're going to get all of the disappearing. This uh, battle line yep, is about to get more, very silly. Some more damage pips with the Malificorn. More so adaptoid just... triggers. Uh, yeah, he's going to have a lot of clicking to do, but I think uh, by locking him into dis, two infernuses on the board, one in the discard pile, I think that might be the end of it. Yes, so um, uh, if you can get to there's check not here. anything he's going to be able to do in Dis, and Lorenzo, at the start of his next turn, uh, gets the Gambling Den twice, gains four Amber anyway. Uh, potentially, yes. All of the Archive discard uh, does get to check with the second mark of Dis, uh, and gets up to eight Amber, which I think probably is enough to lock it out. Um, Lorenzo won game one. Uh, don't necessarily see any options here. Uh, okay, uh, yeah, Rodine goes for, um, goes the, for gamble. the gamble. Doesn't make it, unfortunately. Uh, does what he can with the disc. Archives another Infernus, but this is a game over, I think. And what a game! Yep. And played very well by Lorenzo, helped, I think, greatly by a heckin' ch Sanctum Chonk right at the very beginning. Yeah, those first few turns, uh, the initial five card Sanctum Hand with all of the Chonky Boys, uh, keeping Rodian from building an effective board presence. Uh, continually gaining amber, reaping out. Um, it was uh, Lorenzo a lot. manages to avoid fucking up with the gambling den and goes into the top eight. And massive congratulations to the Hamburg Atlanteans there. One of uh, one of the best teams in the the world, I think, easily as yes. seen by their massive presence in the. Uh, overall standings of this sort of event. Uh, Lorenzo is still in. Uh, Shreds from the Hamburg Atlanteans is also still in. Shreds, you say? Just Shreds, you say. <laughs> uh, uh, I think there might be another one. Am I forgetting about someone? I hope not. Uh, they're all very good. Mm. Uh, and no shame, I think, on the Rodian side. Two very well-played games for both players. Um, so... Lorenzo will go on to play the winner of another game, which will be between some other people. Uh, and it will be the... Oh, God, this bracket. We'll, we'll play the winner of Vince T versus Dr. Sheep. Uh, shall, we, uh, shall we call Lorenzo and Radian for a post-game interview? Uh, yeah, I think, if okay. we can... If they're, if they're up for that. Um, Have a bit yeah. of a chat. Let's do that. Hello? Hi. Hi. Hello. Hi. Uh, I'll just change my scene a second. There we go. Uh, I'll wait for Callum to get in here. There we go. Well, that was an incredible set of games, you two. I uh, thoroughly enjoyed watching them. Yeah, they were, they were crazy games, really, really tough games. Um, bah. <laughs> Hello. Alan's here. Hello. So I realized that I had to also join this call. <laughs> okay. uh, so, Lorenzo, congratulations. How, do you, how are you feeling? Thank you. Um, really tense games. I'm, I'm glad it's over. Uh, tough games. Uh, and this, this last game was, was pretty crazy. Um, my start was 
keine, keine um, Great. Uh, I think I played 10 Sanctopads or something like that. It was crazy. Uh, yeah, you sort of uh, starting off with the big Sanctum and then the, all the Logos archiving for a giant disc turn at the end. Yeah. Uh, how about you, Rodion? How did you find those games? Obviously. Um, they're brutal, I guess. No, no, really, other word for them. I mean, they're they're great games. They were fun. Uh, the, the first one is entertaining. The second, not so much. Uh, Lorenzo played greatly on both of them. Um, the first one was was tough because oh, a lot of things happened. I need to recall uh, how things developed. But uh, the game was going back and forth. I had some early infernaces which I archived, and then it got to the point where he played a massive uh, shadows. Block. It wasn't massive; it was like three creatures, but they could steal one, so that that's massive. And it was at the point where his draw pile, was, his discard pile, was empty, and I couldn't really use my infernaces to purchase things. But if I held on the infernaces, he could just like. Uh, Triple reap, or actually like double steal and reap once, and play more cards from his hand, and go to check in a position where I couldn't really do anything about it because I couldn't just wait for him to build his discard pile before I play my infernaces. I needed to present a solid threat on the board, so I had to use the the archived infernaces and nudges and everything to put them back in the game, make some pressure, force him to play his cards. In the end, it got to that frantic uh, time finish where just had a lot of uh, Star Alliance creatures. He could just reap and go to 12 and kill the Anthony. So I couldn't really do much. But it was they were great games, definitely. Yeah. How have you found the KFPL overall? Because I know you were sort of borrowed or tried off Jupiter. How has that been for you? Um, I borrowed all Jupiter's decks, yes. Yep. Um, what is your question exactly? How oh, do how I feel about the tournament? Have you enjoyed it? Has it been stressful? Yeah, it's the overall impression. Yeah, yes. Uh, I did play season one, so uh, it was it was adaptive at the time, and we don't have a lot of uh, amazing decks in Brazil because of well financial reasons. Decks are expensive and stuff, and you need to open like five hundred decks before you find mm -hmm. something like candle holder or stuff. So I didn't really have a try it, and I only I could only actually play and like have a decent chance because Jupiter was kind enough to. Trust me and borrow me, uh, offer me his decks to borrow. So I did play those three decks. I did not have um, many repetitions with them, not a lot of practice, but the decks are amazing. They're not a, a, my style because I usually uh, like logos in order to archive things and, and play things in the order that I like rather than the order that the cards appear. But other than that, the decks are amazing. It's a triple Infernus deck with Green Reminder and three Stirring Grave. That could be like nine Infernuses purging 18 cards. You can't really complain about it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, let's let's be real. I enjoyed the, the tournament. Uh, I had a rough start. I, I After going 1-0, I, I lost three games in a row. So I was almost eliminated. I was lucky enough that I got to 3-3 and I... I was seated number three on the tiebreaker over Corey and Flaming. And then I trained a little with Jupiter against Aviator to to get to the point where I'm here. But the games here was they were really tough. I enjoyed the tournament overall. Uh, great players, the best players in the world, playing the best deck. So it's a pretty great lab for uh, playing better Keyforge. Uh, yeah, I was saying earlier that it's all the more impressive that you made it this far with a, a borrowed trash. Yeah. Uh, so I was going to say, I would not have, if, if I didn't know, I would not have known you hadn't played many reps with these decks. Yeah, uh, all my games are actually in the Chris, Crystal Tracker. Uh, they're not a lot. Like, I think I just hit like 10 games with Candle Holder, roughly. But, that's yeah. Yeah, that's pretty impressive. I, I, I made the mistake originally uh, when I started the tournament. I didn't practice. I made the mistake of thinking that uh, there was not much to practice because you have three Infernuses, so that's a lot of purges. That's a lot of uh, forcing your opponent to to get to cycle his deck and play again because he's going to lose so, so much Ember that he can't really just win the game with the first cycle. 
and then the second cycle would just be weaker because all the greatest cards were purged. And I thought that I really didn't need to practice originally, but then I started losing games and I, I realized that no, the, this deck is much tougher than, than just playing furnaces and winning. So, uh, so this is Triad, so I just want to talk about bans for a little bit. So why did you ban, why did the two of you ban the decks that you were, uh, that you banned? Um, I think I, I had a choice between, uh, for me, between Candle Holder and Vortex as uh, our decks, I think. Um, because they, uh, both decks have the, the most, um, fake control, a uh, fake control. Um, and I played two decks with, with 20 critters like, my Reverse Collide deck and my MMM deck. And I um, was pretty sure uh, that would have been Odin because of the fact that he plays two, two decks with so much um, big control and Odin don't, really don't care about um, about the board. Um, so I had the choice between Quendel Holder and Vortex and after some practice games I decided to go for Vortex which is, I think also um, has a little bit better um, Better, but better break so far. I think he won a game more than he loses, but all the decks are really pretty even so far. So not much to to get from that. And yeah. Fair enough. How about you, Radion? Why did you ban Odin? Well, first of all, I, I looked at the Excel sheet, and of his six games, Odin was <laughs> having banned five times, and I. I... I think uh, Specialist had been banned the other time. But then I opened the decks and actually got to, to look at them and I saw Triple Control the Week and <laughs> that was it. Like, really. Uh, yeah, it is a... Um... At this game... Oh, okay. Uh, you say. Oh, it's a very, it's a very scary looking deck. Yeah, it's amazing. And, and they're like double Miasma. There's Killing Aberrant Control in uh, Graft or, or too much or maybe both. I don't remember now. So he could just go Miasma and block me from making my keys and then eventually stealing everything. Yeah, there are a lot of things that were uh, troublesome about him. I lost this game now with a mark of this. Not that I would have won uh, had he not played a mark of this, but I could have stalled like one turn with Miasma Bomb, then a second turn with Anthony. So I kind of had a shot as long as I had like two gambling dens. I could just stall him two turns and, and make the keys. But one mark of this was enough to just uh, send me into a bad turn and and not do anything. And he had like three controlled weeks, which are even stronger because he could choose he can choose any house other than something that I have on the board. So it was really scary. Fair enough. Uh, so Lorenzo, how you feel? How you feeling about going forward? Top eight? How yeah, great. <laughs> um... Big shoes to fill with the uh, Kiwi last year. Yeah, this season even. and we only um, Swiss is also not uh, yeah, yeah, top true. sixteen. So yeah, maybe he also succeed to go top eight. And yeah, I'm look forward. And mm. yeah, but great great game so far, and um, really really played Rodion. So uh, yeah, congrats to. Both of you, a series of excellently played games. It's very enjoyable to watch and commentate. Uh, we are starting up again in 15 minutes with Jay Philippeg versus Mentor. Uh, so another representative from United Archons Prime, this time taking on someone from the AFK. Uh, so I think we're going to have a, uh, a brief break, and then I'll come back for some deck chat, and then we'll get started at half past. Uh, thank you to Lorenzo and Rodion for the games and for coming on. Congratulations, Lorenzo, and good luck on the next round. Again. Thank you. Be cheering for you. Congratulations and thank you both for coming on and talking to us. Uh, yep. All right. Thanks so much. Bye. Bye. Bye bye. Auf Wiedersehen.